Hey guys, Terry Red here, and in this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Instead of doing a, a nice, lengthy, detailed video that goes through almost everything you want to know about a topic, in this one, I'm going to do something as fast as possible. So what we're going to do here is we are going to install Future Pinball and BAM and have it all set up for you as fast as possible with, with a few table examples, and then when we're all set up, then I'm just going to go through and show a few tables and uh, explain a, a few things about how Future Pinball works. But the actual setup is going to be as fast as possible. And, it, and this is going to be done for a single screen desktop setup only. This is not uh, a, a multi-screen cabinet setup video. That's going to be a separate video. This is just for the plain Jane single screen desktop guys. So that way we can uh, show how easy and quick it can be to get Future Pinball up and running. So we're, uh, I'm going to do the same thing as you guys. I'm going to use my Future Pinball and BAM Mega Guide as the source for everything. And I'm going to go through the process just like you would. And uh, we're going to make this simple. And we're going to do it fast. And then after, you guys get to play. So here we go. All right. So first thing, you're going to come to my guide here, which I will have in the link, uh, link to that in the description. And then uh, I'm not going to describe everything in here. I'm just going to go through the process really quick. The whole point of having the guide is that you guys can come back and read everything after the fact if you want while you're going through the whole process. So you're going to come down and to this section, how to install and set up Future Pinball and BAM the easy way. And Currently, it's a 13-step process, but, you know, this may change in the future, but the bottom line is it's the same procedure. It's all in order. Step one, and you go through and follow that. So that's what we're going to do. So here we go. We're going to go to step one, and we're going to make sure Windows is set up correctly. So that means making sure your video card, audio, and motherboard drivers are up to date. All of them. It matters. You could have a crappy audio card driver, and it won't allow Future Pinball to work right. I've seen it so many times. So just make sure you're up to date with everything first. Then you're going to check your Windows settings for your screen. So in this case, we only have one screen. So now I have a desktop, uh, two screens here, but we're just pretending this is a single screen setup. So this is my main screen, and I'm going to make sure that the text scaling is at 100%. If you don't do that, then when the, the window for Future Pinball launches, it may be blown up and too big. That's very important. Okay. All right, so step two, download and install Future Pinball, and bam. So we're going to get that at Rav Arcade's website. So Rav Arcade, he's the guy that's made bam, that has updated Future Pinball with so many features. And uh, he's done a great thing by making a two-in-one installer that installs Future Pinball and bam. So you're going to click on this guy, and you're going to download it. Now, I've already downloaded it, and it takes a while, so uh, that's fine. I'm not going to download it. Uh, we're going to do this as quick as possible. All right. So I've downloaded it. It's right here. I'm going to install that. All right. So you just go through, accept everything. It's all safe, guys. It's, it's not changed in many years. Uh, you can install it to a different folder if you want. Uh, the default works fine for me. And then just install everything that BAM has. You never know if you're going to use it in the future. And then let her go through. Now, sometimes... If you run the shortcut after, if you run this afterwards, I've seen it get, give an error sometimes. Don't worry about that. You could just let it close and then you'll, you, it'll run fine after that. So if you hit finish, it'll launch Future Pinball on its own. Now, that was BAM launching Future Pinball. So this is Future Pinball here, but we're not going to do that. We're going to close that. All right. So then what we're going to do is we are going to back to the guide and we're going to assume. You know, you may need a new update. In the future, you may need a newer update. I'm only showing you this so that you guys know what to do. So if you go to Rav Arcade's website on the download, you'll find here, this is all the files you can get. The normal installer we just used, or if you want only BAM to be installed, if you already had Future Pinball ready and going, uh, this is what you would get for uh, updating BAM. So you would download this, save that, and then when that's downloaded, then you would uh, open the zip and overwrite your files. Now, this is where I have Future Pinball installed. So we'll go to the Future Pinball folder. And in here, this is the normal files. This is BAM in here, okay? So this is what you would be updating when you uh, eventually will need to update BAM. You will need to do that. So that's why I'm showing you this first, okay? So you would uh, open BAM, and this is all 
where everything related to BAM will be is in this folder. Now, by default, he normally has the installer up to date as well. You know, but I'm just showing you this. So that way you guys will know that uh, this is how you update. It's super easy, super simple. It just takes a while for the, the file to download. Should be done very soon, though. Come on. There we go. You can do her. You can do it, buddy. Yeah. All right. Come on, Rav. We got to get faster speed on that site. <laughs> all right. Let's go. There we go. All right. So we'll open that up. And there's BAM. So what? So these are the same files you can see. So you can just drag and drop. All right. Now you can replace the files. The only one, but the ones I would say you. This guy you might not want to uh, replace. The reason why is because you may have yours set up at some point in the future. Okay? So that's it for that. All right. So we got BAM set up. We got Future Pinball set up for files. So now you go to step three. Install Terry Red's BAM default config and settings file. So what this is going to do is this is going to set up BAM already set to go with the menu settings and everything so that way you guys don't have to go in and tinker around for the all the initial stuff and because we have a desktop setup you're going to be getting this one so you click on this guy you save him okay it's just three files that's it ah that's not what i wanted So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the BAM folder, and you're just going to copy these guys over. So this is my uh, initial setup that gets everything ready to go for you guys. Okay? All right. So that step is done. Here, actually, let's do that. There. All right. And this describes everything that that has set up for you guys. So now we're going to install my default config POV files. Now, this is more beneficial for a uh, cabinet guys so so that way you know uh they can have a a correct pov set up for that instead of having uh an incorrect one set up but it's still beneficial to desktop guys because what this does is it presets the lighting the post processing and the size for that view if you use it in a cabinet but for desktop guys it's still handy uh so that way you can have the right lighting and everything else already set up for you Okay, so all you do is you drag those over, and then when you download one of these tables, you then name this config file the same as your table file. And then when you load the table for the first time, boom, it'll already have all the settings, the lighting, and everything ready to go for you. So that's why those are there. Uh, you know, you can always delete uh, one of these if you don't like it or whatever. You know, that's what they're there for. They're, they're there to have everything ma make it nice and easy for you guys. So. It's up to you if you want to use them. I, I, I recommend using them. All right, so step five, install my settings to the registry. Okay, so instead of going through and you know uh, doing everything on Future Pinball, uh, this is just going to do stuff easy for you. That way, uh, all the essential stuff is done ahead of time. That way, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about you guys screwing stuff up, hopefully. <laughs> you know, so just uh, download this. And it's gonna all it's gonna do is it's gonna change our registry settings for future pinball. That's all it's gonna do. So you just double click on that. It's gonna ask you, do you trust this file? Well, I'm a trustworthy guy. So that's up to you if you guys want to trust me or not. So hit yes. And then it says, okay, the, the values in the registry have been changed. So now all those settings in future pinball are changed for all the essential stuff. And if you ever go into registry, that's where it's located, and everything I changed is under that. Okay. Step six, how to run Future Pinball. Okay. So if you go into the Future Pinball folder, you're going to see, oh, hey, this is Future Pinball. Well, this is how you used to run Future Pinball. This is the old 2008 program that has not been changed. You will not be using this ever, 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 ever. And you will not, you will never, ever set that to run as administrator. If you do that, you'll screw things up. So that's what all this is describing. So don't do that. When you want to use Future Pinball, you always go and run it through FP Loader right here. Okay, This is how we run Future Pinball is with this guy. That's BAM. BAM now launches Future Pinball with all the updates that BAM adds to it. Okay, So it looks the same, but it's not. Very important you guys understand the difference. Okay, And never set this to administrator unless you 
absolutely have to, okay? By default, you shouldn't have to, but depending on your system, the security settings, you may have to do that, but by default, you should not have to. Only do it if you have to. And that's what all this is talking about. Uh, in the past, there were modified future pinball exe files that were needed to get rid of the watermark and other things. Uh, you don't do that anymore. It, it, a lot has changed in, 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 in uh, the last while since I did my last videos. You no longer use a modded exe. BAM has fixed pretty much everything. It, it, it gives you the choice of removing the watermark. It gives you a, a whole bunch of other choices. It fixes a lot of bugs and limitations. So. Do not use a, a hacked or modded EXE anymore. It's not needed and it is not recommended. So that's what this is talking about. So don't do that anymore. All right. So now we're going to go into Future Pinball. So remember, you run it from FP Loader only. All right. And I'm going to drag this over here. All right. So we're going to check our editor settings. So what we do is we go into editor. Make sure it's all the same. This is the one you want to make sure that's not enabled. If that's enabled, it loads all the textures into the editor ahead of time, and that will screw up things on some tables, and it will crash. So don't do that, okay? Leave it like that. Okay. Oh, we're jumping the gun there. All right. So video and rendering. All right. So this is a big one. So desktop settings are pretty, pretty uh, straightforward. So you click on that one. It shows you how everything is supposed to be set up, right? So you go to video and rendering, and then you just make sure it's all the same. Now, the one things you the things you can change are this one here and here. If you want to change to a different default view, and if you don't want it to follow the ball, you can change anti-aliasing if you need to. Uh, you should need to change this on a desktop setup because it'll match whatever you have in Windows anyway. Uh, the old, so you want to make sure it's on widescreen and run it in full screen. It will always run much better as a result. Don't run it in windowed, uh, you know, for normal gameplay and all that. Uh, it's just better to run it in full screen. Uh, and then, see, the only thing you're going to change is really your resolution here. Now, I have a 4K TV, but I'm just showing you an HD right now. So, really, everything here as you see it does not change. Don't change anything here except for your resolution, anti-aliasing, and then this guy here. If you enable trilinear filtering, it'll take a long time to load. If you enable the game room, some tables will crash. So use these exact settings, guys, okay? That's what uh, my registry file was about, was getting all these right. So you only have to come in here and change a couple of things, and that's it, okay? So that's it. It's super simple, guys. It, you know, that it, uh, it makes it all set up for you. All right, so arcade mode. Oh, yes. So that's important for you guys to understand. You're, you will never enable this on a desktop setup, ever on a desktop single screen setup. If you enable that, you will screw up things. Some tables will run wrong. They'll run too fast. Just don't enable it. You will have problems and glitches. So that's only for a second screen back box, uh, back glass setup for uh, cabinets or multi-screen users. So don't enable that. And that's what I describe here, okay? Now, full screen, uh, borderless windowed and windowed, you don't need that. Uh, that's only if you need that for certain specific th specific things like running pup packs and that. And even then, in the future, you may not even need that. So unless you absolutely have to, do not enable borderless full screen or windowed options at all. They're there in case you need them for other specialty things like pup packs. But again, that might not even be needed. Uh, you know, so just don't, just don't use it unless otherwise told. <laughs> uh, so controls. All right. So super simple. Go into your control settings, and then here you can change uh, your keyboard keys for what you need to. Uh, these are the ones that are hard coded, that can't be changed. And then here you can choose whatever controllers you have, and make unique settings per controller. Like you know, it's not like only one controller can be used. You can have enable and disable exactly which of your controllers you want to use. So you can have the mouse, anything else, or only one. It's up to you. Change it all here because the defaults are usually not correct. So you're going to have to go through and figure out what they are if that works. And the numbers don't always match up correctly, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, because it's older settings compared to newer controllers. So you're just going to have to go through and figure out what they are to make it work. Uh, and for this part here, the axis uh, on some controllers, you know, you want the normal X, Y, or Z axis, not any of the funky other ones because they won't necessarily show up or work. 
So the normal standard X, Y, and Z axis is what you use for the plunger and the nudge, okay? And I will point out uh, analog nudge will never get you a tilt. It's not really normal compared to like a digital nudge, which will give you a tilt. Uh, there's no tilt bob function in future pinball. So that's it for, uh, for the controls there. Now, while you're playing a game, you can adjust the sound and volume level. Uh, that's using uh, the home end page up, page down. Uh, you may need to do that uh, if you use extra features and options. Uh, there are some games that have an extra fire and action button, uh, like Iron Man or Jaws, uh, where you know it's kind of like the, the stern fire button on a stern cabinet. Uh, that's done with the special one and special two keys normally. So that would be... Yeah, where are they? Special one, special two. It's usually those guys there that will activate that on most tables. Uh, you just got to figure out which one it is. You know, and sometimes they're both used on a table. Sometimes one will change a back glass. Some will, one will change a, you know, or activate something or fire something. So that's it. So that's it for your controls. So basically, we're, we're set to go. Like, we're literally set to go for running future pinball tables now. That's it for the normal settings. So what I recommend doing is just choose new, okay? And launch a table. All right. So the reason why is just to make sure it's actually working. Okay. Don't launch into a, a major big table yet. So here we go. This is the, the nothing table just for testing. And if you hit the Q key or the tilde key, that brings up BAM. Okay. So this is BAM. You, you don't need to go in here unless you want to make changes to lighting, post-processing, or any other stuff, okay? So you don't have to go in here, uh, but I'll show you more about that after. But we, as you can see, it's working. You can, uh, you know, it's a, it's a terrible table, <laughs> you know, but as you can see, it's working, and it's a quick test, okay? So we know that's working. All right, so now that we've got everything up and going, we know it's working. So now we can download some fantastic tables. So in the tables section here, uh, I, I have them listed kind of from newest to oldest in some ways. Uh, is, this may change in the future. So you have Slam Tilt Ultimate Pro tables. Always go to those first. Excellent examples, fully updated using newer BAM physics, BAM lighting features, awesome, fantastic tables. Uh, and then you have my pin event tables, which are also fully updated, same thing. Uh, but that's a more advanced thing down the line. That's another video altogether. So don't do pin event right away. Uh, you know, wait until later on until you have future pinball up and running and you're good to go and you've played a bunch of tables and then you can explore pin event afterwards. Okay. Uh, Doff links tables are more for cabinet users. So it's not really a benefit for desktop users normally because they're the same tables you can get on desktop anyway. Uh, but you can play them. You just need uh, the Doff links uh, VBS file. Instructions are uh, with the tables. Uh, PinSim DB, that's where you'll find the largest selection. That's got all the oldest of the old, and some new stuff that you can't find anywhere else is on PinSim DB. So that's the largest one, but the they're not. Most of them are not updated tables. So just a heads up: if you get a table from there, uh, you know, unless they specify that it uses newer physics and newer BAM features, then it's an older table that may not play so well or look so well so just a heads up and then you can find some at these other sites as well all right so what we're going to do is uh you can go to like a slam site here so let's do that here here i'll close up these here and if you go to slam's site here you'll see he's got a great selection they're always right here in this part here if you click on games that's not going to have everything updated so don't go there because the ones you can actually download and get are all right here, okay? That's what all these are. All right, so I've already downloaded a few, so I'm not going to download them uh, here, but I just wanted to show you where you can get them. So I've already downloaded a few tables, and they're right here, okay? So now we're going to install tables. Now, if you don't know what to do with table files, all right, so that's at the end of the table section. That's what this describes, tables and other files, where they go. So you have your future pinball table files, your library files, your script files. If it's an older table that has any kind of physics files, or if you have BAM config files, which I just showed you already that we downloaded a few of those. All right, so if you're not sure, this describes exactly where everything goes. So let's uh, go through uh, some newer uh, examples here, okay? So we'll go into... The tables will go into here, tables folder, all right? 
So we got the indie one here. That's an amazing table. The, the new indie uh, Stern from Slam. Oh my God, I love this table. So you open up the zip file and then you got the table file here, FPTs. Those go into here. All right. Now, in this case, he's got a VBS. That's a script file. All right. Anything that's dot VBS, that is a script file. Now, we don't have a scripts folder here, but there is a scripts folder that you use. So you just name it as scripts, okay, with an S. Make sure it's with an S, okay? And then you just put the VBS file in there. Okay, and that's it for that table. And now I'm going to do a couple other ones here while I'm at it, just to make it quick and easy, okay? So we got, ah, we got Iron Man. Okay, so, oh, wow, we, we got it. Oh, I know what that is. Okay, so in that case, you have your table file. Now, we already have the script file here. It's the same one, so we don't need it. Now, in this case, uh, this zip file is actually a Chrome ball texture. And I described that here, that, you know, that some zip files can be, you know, uh, other things, not just XML files as well. They can also be uh, a Chrome ball texture and other things. Uh, and I, I, and I described that uh, later on in the BAM section, how that works. So that's what that's all about. Uh, you don't have, in that, that case, you don't have to have it. It's not a physics file because if you click on it, see, if it's just a bitmap folder like this, that's just a ball. That's all it is. And the way that works is you would just, uh, keep it the same name as a table. You don't need it. It's not required. All right. So that's why I got all these because these are all good examples. So now this is an old table. This is Lord of the Rings Ultimate, not Ultimate Pro. It's just, it's an older table. But I wanted to use this as an example because it has library files. All right. So you'd still put the table file here. And then library files go here, FPLs. Okay. It's important to put them in the right folders to keep things organized. Because if you don't do that, things get messy and you get errors, you get problems. So make sure they go in the right locations, guys. Okay. And then one more Star Wars. All right. So Star Wars, throw that in there. And then we already have this VBS file, so we don't need that, that either. All right. So there we go. We've got a few table examples ready to go. All right, guys. So now that we're uh, all set up and ready to go, our future pinball and settings, it's all done. Like, that's it. We're, we're good to go. Uh, so now we're just going to play through a few games. And I'll just show you a, a few th the basic stuff. You know, the controls, camera views, uh, the, the, some of the band settings you guys can do. This is all extra stuff. You know, we're, we're, we're all uh, set and ready to go. All right. Now, some of these tables may take a little while, depending on how fast your system is. My system that I'm demonstrating on is an i5-4670K with a NVIDIA GTX 1080. So CPU is a little older. Uh, the graphics card is pretty, you know, standard now. You know, it's not high-end new one, but it's not, you know, low-end either. It's kind of pretty standard now, you know, and it's, it's more than enough for playing Future Pinball on 4K. You know, uh, like Future Pinball Max out on 4K looks awesome on desktop like it, it's just beautiful I, i'm doing this in 1080p right now but yeah okay so you, you saw those messages there about shadow maps that's that's bam it'll do that the first time it loads a table okay so you see this uh permission for game to take over camera control not every uh table will have that uh that's gonna be more slams tables that's a, fe uh, a feature of bam where uh, some games uh, may change the view, the camera view, during multi-ball or other moments in the table. Oh, my favorite part. I love that. You know, so I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, allow or uh, let it go there. So if you don't touch it, it'll go away eventually on its own. So here you go. We're... All right. So I, I just inserted a coin and I can uh, start the table if I want. Uh, so I'll just show you. If you hit the function keys... You got different uh, views you can choose, okay? Now, depending on if you have uh, scrolling enabled or not on, in the video rendering settings, then this view will move up and down with the ball. So it depends on what you want to play around with. Uh, you can hit the manual camera to kind of just play around, you know, look around on the table. Uh, hit the tab key. It looks up on the back box. Uh, yeah, so that's the standard stuff. If you hit the tilde key, 
that will bring up BAM. And you can go in here and uh, play around with a few settings. Uh, if you go to add-ons, you can uh, change the ball and flipper shadows to whatever you want. Uh, you can change these settings here. I've never honestly used them. The, the trails, that's kind of like mouse trails and windows. I, you know, I, I, yeah, I keep these off by default. Uh, you shouldn't need to touch these in desktop. Uh, if you use my settings, they'll be like this. So you want them like this. Uh, if you, uh, DMD bulb size, I mean, that's, if you want to play with that, it makes the DMD, as you can see, more solid. Uh, I, I, you know, I personally like it old school. If you go into plugins, well, that's going to be like if you want the nicer pinball high scores, that's what that's about. If you want to play with uh, Bloom, you can. I don't recommend it. Like here, this is with no Bloom. That's with, well, you're not going to see much of it here. Hold on. Let's, uh, here. Oh, the, now you can see it. So, so, yeah, you can see with Bloom on there, you know, uh, yeah, see the difference there? So you can adjust it, but I personally highly recommend keeping it off. It's just not worth it. Uh, SSAO, uh, you can enable that, self-shaded ambient occlusion. It can be pretty demanding, though. So by default, I recommend keeping it off. But if you turn it on, it'll add nice shadows and other things onto the table. You know, it can, it can make it look nice. You know, it's just if your system can't handle it, I recommend keeping it off. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to turn it off for the moment. And here, I'll, I'll let that go. <laughs> here, we'll, we'll play for a second here. All right, so you can hit the nudge keys. You know, I, I actually like them. Some people don't like Future Pinball's nudge keys, but I like them. So while you're playing on any table with BAM, if you uh, hit the N key or the P key by default, it'll change textures. So there's a whole bunch you can choose, and it remembers what you've chosen per table. It, like All the changes you make to the BAM settings in the menu are saved to a config file for the table. And remember, earlier on, we installed my config files earlier, uh, and I'll explain more about that later. So you can see different, like you can have a soccer ball for crying out loud. You know what I mean? Like, look at that. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> Money is all that you love, and that's what you'll receive. You are unwise to lower your defenses. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to put that back to the default one there. All right. So I'm just going to enable the ball roller here for a second. All right. <laughs> so the ball roller is where you can manually control the ball, you know, but you have to set up the controls for it, which we don't have set up right now, you know. But I wanted to show you. So if you go in here, you can mess around with the lights if you want. Now, the default settings on a lot of tables, like slams tables, will be loaded from the table script. So even though you make changes to any of the lights or the post-processing, it's saved to your uh, to the config file for this table for BAM, but the table script overrides it. And I'll show you where that is. So if you want to make changes on some of these tables and the next time you load, your changes aren't taking effect, it's because the table overrides that. And, and I'll show you where you can make that change. Okay, but yeah, you can like, uh, like post-processing can make a huge difference. By default, this is what it'll look like, but I like to, you know, like now that's a bit too dark. But if you maybe go somewhere in between and then put specular up, now now you're going to see, and I'll show you here, we'll do that. Now you can see the, the Death Star and everything else looks really nice, like really, really nice. And look at that lighting, like, you know, so on some tables, the post-processing, when you change it to match what your TV looks good with, it can look really, really nice. But... Again, some tables won't look good with it. You'll, ha you'll have to play around with it. All right. Oh, look at that lighting. Love it. Oh, oh, I love it. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous, guys? Oh, I love it. Ah, let it go.
It is pointless to resist. It's a wonder you're still alive. And then there you go. That's the newer high score BAM plugin that lets you see that. No! Don't fail me again. Remember, love it. Always. All right. So, yeah, and that's and uh, the only other things I can think of would be uh, the ball, the fig ball. You can change uh, that as well. So that if you want it to be brighter. You can change the brightness, the rendering, the specular, the shininess, all that. So if, I, if we were to go back in here and try playing it again. Sure, we'll do the time attack. All right. Oh, I love it. So you can see that, it, that the changes I put for the brightness has made that ball a lot brighter there. Okay, so just some things to play around with, mess around with. Uh, that's about it, though. I think that's all I really had to say with this one. So uh, now a couple other things here for the band menu. Uh, what these are about is what this basically means reset session is if you make any changes, but then you hit reset session, it'll go back to the initial settings that were loaded with the table when you first started up. Reset the default, that will reset it to the default configuration file and bam. Uh, so that way, if you make changes or whatever, and you're like, oh crap, I want to put it back the way it was, it'll go back to the default setting for all tables. Uh, and save as default now. Only do that one if you've made changes to one table and you really like the way that table looks, then you can use that as a new default configuration that you can then use for all tables. So that's what that's about. Never do this one. Never ever, because we want to keep advanced menu only. If you go into the preferences here, don't change this to basic. Because if you do that, it'll go to the basic menu, which then uses different lighting and everything else, and you don't want that. Okay, so if you do that, then go back in here and hit advanced. And now we're back into advanced. Okay, so now we're back into the advanced lane because the settings are totally separate for each one. Never go and use basic. Okay, and that's about it uh, for the preferences. That's just for your font and everything else if you want to do that. And that, that's it. That's, that's the main stuff for the band settings. I just wanted to show all that stuff to you guys because uh, you know that's that's the kind of thing you can play around with per table, and it's really cool. Okay. So if we exit now, I'll show you what I meant by the config files for BAM. Uh, so we remember we copied these over earlier, right? The thing is, they have to match the table name exactly, all right? If they don't match the table name, here, I'll get rid of that one there, uh, the table name exactly, then you'll see, let's see here. Yeah, okay, so for Star Wars, Okay, so see, this one ha made one. Oh, I, you know what? I forgot. I deleted uh, the previous one. <laughs> so if you downloaded my uh, config files earlier from, uh, from my page, so the, right here, okay, you'll notice that the name is different. It's because it's the same name as the file name. So BAM will automatically save a config file the same as the file name for the table. All right? So in this case, because I wanted to use my... Uh, config file, what I can do is then I can just uh, rename it the same. No, that's not what I want. That's the table file. So that's that's the one I downloaded that I had my stuff already preset. And there you go. Okay. So any of these guys, you have to make sure they match your table file if you've downloaded my files okay or or someone else's nicer files that, that's all i was trying to say okay guys so there's one more thing uh i wanted to go through as well and that's uh what i was talking about before about how uh sometimes if you want to change your uh lighting and post processing on a table and it saves it to the config file but when you play the game it doesn't seem to get used and that's because it's loaded directly from the table script which overrides that uh so in this case this one does that it's not going to be on every table uh 
you know, it's only on some like slams, ultimate pro tables. Uh, a lot of those will do it uh, on all of my pin event table mods. They'll all have it. So what you do is you go into the script and you're going to look for this section here. There we go. The subroutine of set light parameters in BAM. Okay. So if you look all this stuff right here, that's everything you set in BAM for your lights and, pro and uh, post-processing. It's all in here. You know, so uh, what this table does is it, it loads a subroutine on startup, and then that, would, that will override anything that was in the config file. Uh, so basically, if you want to be able to use your own lighting and post-processing, then, well, basically, you can just go ahead and disable this. It's the easier way to do it. Like, you know, leave, leave the subroutine in there that, just in case... The rest of the script calls for it and you don't know where that is and you cause problems. It's easier just to disable all these. That way you can always come back and enable them again if you want, right? And that's it. You just save the table file and uh, launch it like normal. And uh, then that, that's all you got to do for that. You know, it's not, not a big deal. Again, not many tables will have it, uh, you know, well, not yet, maybe more in the future. But, you know, it's mostly uh, Slam's uh, Ultimate Pro tables and uh, my pin event tables and a few other ones out there that will have uh, that though. So that, that's it. So, all right. That's a lengthy example of all the BAM features. So now we're going to go through and we're going to talk about, well, we're, actually, I'm going to show you Iron Man real quick. Okay. We'll run Iron Man. Iron Man Ultimate Pro, I should say. Now, this is not a lot of slams tables are not the same as the original arcade ones. They're like they have the original main basic uh, gameplay, but they're also very different. They have a lot more gameplay, a lot more modes and extra things like this, for example, has a, an action fire button, which the original Stern table does not. And it's used heavily in this table. So, you know, I, I, I'm showing you this example because a lot of these tables will have that special one, special two button be used for various different things in the game. So uh, that's why I'm trying to show you these particular examples. So that way, because you guys are, are going to miss key parts of the gameplay on some of these tables that make all the difference in the world. Or you may be stuck. You may be like trying to get through. Like, I don't know how to get past this uh, menu or something like that. So that's why I'm showing you this stuff. All right. Drop my needle. Okay, so here we go. Uh, in this case, it lets you choose the music, but if you hit the start button, I don't know if it's actually going to do it. No. Okay, so you're hitting the start button. It won't do anything. That's because you have to hit the, the fire button or the special key in this case. Oh, look at that. He's flying. I love it. Not bad, huh? So see, in this case, it's just like a modern stern table. It has a, that button there. So what you do is... You hit the special one key. In this case, it's uh, A on the keyboard. And uh, well, actually, I can't do it there. So if you hit A on the keyboard, Precisely the action I would have oh, hell yeah. there you go. Okay. And you'll notice Will you be now it's gone. Right? Soon, sir. So if you hit insert your coin, oh, yes. and then you just so play the table. Ready. Commencing automated so you're going to see. And then that means you can use that to fire the ball. Or do the pl normal plunger if you want. Uh, look at look at this, awesome man! I love it. And you can see that the video clips on the the play field if you want. Ah. Yeah, this this is, table is so different than the actual Stern one. And I'm not gonna go heavily into this because I'd be playing forever if I did. But so so fun. I I, I love this stuff, man. It was. All right. So I just wanted to show that real quick. So that way you guys understand about the action button, because that one uses it heavily. All right. So there's that. Uh, maybe I'll show. Actually, yeah. Okay. Here's a good example. Okay. I, I already pre-installed. Uh, well, yeah, actually, you saw me copy those. That's right. So in this case, it's Lord of the Rings, right? Uh, so in this case, I uh, made an XML file or file for that. And what I did for that is, here, I'll, I'll get rid of that. Because this table, Lord of the Rings Ultimate, is an older table. It doesn't use newer BAM physics, all right? Uh, what you want to do is you want to get a, an XML file 
This is the old physics. That's what these are, okay? These are the different old physics you can use in future pinball. So in this case, I know this table used 2.7 uh, version of physics. And sometimes it'll tell you in the game on the DMD or something else. So that, you know, that's, that's the one way you can find out. Or it'll tell you in the table script or on the loading screen. Who knows? But what you do is you put that with the table. And then you just name it the same as the table. And that's it. I thought BAM does pretty much everything. Uh, you know, if it mat the files match uh, the table file name, then it'll usually work. And then that's it, okay? So we're going to load up that table. And I'm going to use this one as an example. Uh, just give me a moment here. I want to make sure I don't have a config file first here. That way. All right. Uh, yeah, we do. Okay, so I want to make sure it's the same as if you guys ran this for the first time. And that's what you can do as well. Uh, if, if you've messed up stuff, you can always delete your config file and then it'll just automatically make another one uh, based on your default config settings. So yeah, again, this is an older table. So if you don't use an XML file, it may play pretty funky, like really, really, really funky. <laughs> you know, like if you use the wrong physics uh, with the wrong table on Future Pinball, you can have some really, really bad physics. Like, you know, it doesn't play the best uh, for shooting out the flippers on older tables, but if you use the wrong XML file on an old table, it could play pretty funky. Uh, so it's not going to play as nice as a newer table. But... Okay, so here's an example. So this table used the default settings, and you can see it's too dark. It, it, the lighting doesn't quite look right, you know. So what you, what you can do on any table at any point is uh, you can uh, go to the band menu, you can go into lights, and then you can go down to presets. And then you just cycle through. So if you hit default, that's how the old table would have normally looked. It's like that because you couldn't adjust the lighting, right? That's how they normally would have looked. But you could still adjust the lighting, even though it's an older table, uh, if you want. But as you can see, that doesn't look so great. And that's what a newer table would actually use are those settings, right? So that's a, that's a big difference between the two. So you can do night if you want or if you want to do just normal default. You know, it's totally up to you. Okay. So, so in this case, we're in a starter. There you go. Now again, you know, like some of these old tables, uh, you know, they're gonna be a mix. Some will be amazing and play fantastic. Some will, you know, be amazing tables, but they need to be updated. <laughs> you know, I don't know what else to say beyond that. Like it's, yeah, <laughs> like this table, I love this table, absolutely love it. And this will get an update, you know, it, by Slam, by me, somebody else, but it will get an update and it will be amazing. Like I, I would definitely be doing a pin event of this at some point in the future. And that's it. You can see, so you can see the difference between the lighting too. Like no lighting, no shadow maps, nothing. This is just plain Jane old future pinball. Okay. So that's it. I, uh, that's all I wanted to show with that. And uh, maybe we'll play indie, and then that that's it. One more example. We'll play some indie. Because I I know that had something on there that oh I know what it was. Uh, it's something that can be a little confusing if you hit the wrong button. So this one's a, another example. You can see it takes a long time to load because it has to process all the models. So don't worry. Don't click on anything. You know, just let let the table load like it normally does. Because some people see a table taking a while lo load, and they're like, oh, crap. And they start clicking and clicking, and, and then they think the program has crashed. And it's not, you know. But what, what will happen is the window will go white and they think it's going to crash. Like, no, it's not going to crash. You just had to let it keep loading until it's done. That's all. So, yeah, just be patient. On a, on a fast new C CPU, yeah, this is pretty quick. But, yeah, on, on older ones, it takes a little longer.
And see, that's Bam making shadow maps for the first time when you load a table. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to do that every time. It's just the first time, right? Oh, I love this table. Oh, I love this table. Okay, so for this one, if you're not in game, as an example, if you hit the special key, it makes the, the DMD and the videos go away on the top left there. So just keep in mind what the special keys do, like, you know, in gameplay and out of gameplay. You know, so there, it's different on every table. All right. All right. So let's do this guy. So as an example, if you look at Indy in the center there with all his flashing lights, if I hit the special key, it changes to what mode, uh, you know, it's going to or what scene it's going to play in uh, for that game. So that's just one of the many things, you know, you can use it for, right? Sorry, I could, I could go on forever with this guy. So, yeah, so those are a good few examples that, uh, you know, that way you guys know what the BAM menu does, uh, how the settings will work, uh, you know, extra stuff just so that you guys understand how to use the games normally. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So you're all set up. The, the, uh, like I said, the initial setup doesn't take long at all. It's actually quite quick. You know, you, you go through the actions. It's very quick when I don't talk, right? And then playing the games, you can play the games instantly. It's all the extra stuff that you want to play around with that takes a while, you know. But, yeah, that's it, guys. You know, uh, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, I'm not going to cover any advanced stuff like pin event or, you know, my pin event tables or pup packs or anything. like that. That's a totally different topic altogether. This is just normal future pinball and bam and tables, you know. So download some great tables. Have some fun, you know. They're, they're fantastic. You know, uh, and then if you're more adventurous and if you have a VR headset, you know, then go to my guide and read more about that. And then Future Pinball and VR is amazing. It's fantastic. And cabinet users, you guys are a different uh, a different thing altogether. That would be a different video if I get around to doing one of those. So uh, th thanks for watching. See you in another video, guys. Later. Bye.